We are live here in New York City to talk about Maine Lobster. Yeah. Why New York City? It is the food and media capital of the entire world. And we are going to talk about new shell lobsters. Are we ready? Yes. OK, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the host of Speaking Broadly on Heritage Radio Network, the former longtime editor-in-chief of Food and Wine Magazine, and our host for the evening, Dana Cowan. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're all here. I'm really glad to be here because I love Maine, and I love lobster. And for decades and really decades, I was the editor of Food and Wine, and everyone would say, like, what's your favorite meal? And they're like hanging on the Michelin star, and they're waiting for the French chef. And I'm like, it's lobster from Maine. It's Georgetown Island. I love it. So we're going to hear a lot about the lobster of Maine today. We're going to hear from the lobstermen of Maine. We're going to hear from chefs who've been on lobster boats and cooked incredible dishes with those lobsters from Maine. So. First, I'm going to go over to you guys. Hi, Lobstermen of Maine. How are you oh, today? Yeah. I'm great. How are you doing? Very well. So first, my biggest hello to Krista, because we got to be on a boat together, and it was your grandfather's boat that you've taken on. Tell me, like, what's it like being a third generation Lobsterman of Maine? Yes, it was. Um, my whole family has been fishing forever, my dad, my brother. Um, my uncle and of course my grandfather, we've just done it for years. And um, these, you know, what we've done is Maine. This is who we are. And these practices have been in place since 1850s. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So we're just so happy that we can bring lobster here and share it with everyone and, you know, there's one way you can share it. You gotta pick it first, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the thing about lobster, sometimes it is such a pain, the cracker and the picker, but Chris, what's going on here? Your hands, they're dirty, they're wet, they're inside the lobsters. Yeah, so what we're going on here, we're, uh, we're picking some new shell lobsters. So what's pretty neat here is the new shells have just molted, so they're nice and soft, which gives us the opportunity to break them and crack them with our hands. Um, whereas the uh, old shell lobster, you need tools, you know, you need to break them. Sometimes you hit them with a hammer or crack them with a knife. But uh, these are nice and, and uh, soft. They're able to break them apart, and it's uh, something really enjoyable. So there's a season. Like, I know that there's a season for corn, and there's a season for other things. Uh, but seasons for lobster, man, like, what's, what's going on? I didn't know that there were seasons in lobsters. So in the uh, summertime, the lobsters come in from offshore and they molt, as Chris was saying, they shed their shell and they become new shell lobsters. And it's roughly uh, July 4th all the way up through the fall. So we're in the height. We are in of, the height. Totally the in the total height. Of right shell. moment to be yes. having this. Exactly. For a main lobsterman, the next two months are like a several month long Super Bowl. This is go time. <laughs> you know, can't wait to get back time. on the boat, get yeah. back fishing for lobster. Uh, okay, well fishing, but before you get to fishing, I need to know, like, what are the tricks? Like, what is the trick to the uh, lobster? Yeah, oh, you're, you just did it. It's the twist of the well, wrist. Yeah, so a new shell lobster, you can see how easy it is to twist off the tail. And, you know, it, these aren't going to really hurt you. They're, the, the edges are soft and everything. The shell is soft. So you pull the tail off, you can crack the tail off like that and, and push it right through. And right there, you have a big, nice wow, chunk of meat. Wow, that's the move. Yeah. Flip the tail, push it right through, yeah. and it pops out. Even if you're from New York City, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, even I can do that. I know. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so Bruce, uh, 
now we've got the, the lobster, right? It's all that in front of you. If you were going to make the lobster, how would you make it? Well, the simplest way for me is just steamed lobster with butter. It's just, I don't know, you can be on the beach with these or anywhere. It just cracks open easy. It's sweeter, it's tenderer. But the beauty of the lobster is you can do it however you like, and it turns out into some fabulous recipe. And, but I like it just steamed with butter. See, I think that's perfect, because I, I bet a lot of you would agree, right, that steamed is great. Later, we're going to have some chefs to show us how to like take it to the next level. But before we get there, we've got some video about the difference between new shell and hard shell, because it's kind of confusing. <laughs> Hit the video. <laughs> Need help identifying the differences between main new shell and hard shell lobsters? Here are the key things to look for. New shell lobsters have just molted, so their shells are thinner and give way when squeezed. Hard shells are fully developed and much thicker. Before they're cooked, new shell lobsters have a brighter exterior free of marks and scuffs. Hard shells are darker and frequently marked up. Once cooked, new shells are bright orange while hard shells are darker, usually with spots and scars. The meat of new shells is a vibrant orange and flecked throughout. Hard shell meat is a softer color with fewer flecks. As for texture and flavor, new shell meat is incredibly tender and tastes sweeter. Hard shell is a denser meat with a brinier flavor. This summer, do your own taste test and see which you prefer. Okay, are we clear now? Like, we get the differences between hard shell and new shell, which is awesome, particularly since you've just seen it in the video, right? But that's not enough. What would make it really great is to taste the difference. So later tonight, this audience gets to have new shell lobster. <laughs> So a few weeks ago, I and some of the most incredible chefs in America got to go on Lobster Roast with some of the greatest lobster people in America. And so right now, we're going to meet some of those chefs and we're going to hear about what you can do with this amazing new shell lobster. She's the soon-to-be executive chef and owner of a highly anticipated restaurant in Boston, Mass. She's been featured on television's Top Chef and Beat Bobby Flay and is the co-author of the award-winning cookbook, Myers and Chang at Home. Please welcome this year's James Beard Award winner as best chef in the Northeast, Karen Akunowitz. You've seen him on the hit TV show, Top Chef. You've read about him on Forbes' list of 30 under 30 to watch. His dishes have been inspired by his world travel. Please welcome the executive chef and creator of Kith and Kin Restaurant in Washington, D.C., Kwame Onwachi. He's a star chef's rising star on the Zagat list of 30 under 30 and was recently named by the Rob Report as one of America's best young chefs to watch. Please welcome the chef and partner of Belmore in Chicago, Illinois, Jimmy Papadopoulos. to share an experience, not together. <laughs> a day on a lobster boat. What it's did amazing. you guys think? Oh man, I mean, how can you spend a day better than that, right? Like, no, it was, it was really, I think we were talking earlier, Jimmy, and like we had both said this was on our bucket, bucket list, list of things 100%. to do in life. So right. I couldn't imagine anything better. 
Okay, you made it sound really glamorous. <laughs> Their life is not glamorous. Um, what was the tough part? Like, what, what was really hard, actually? Well, when I was out, we had what, we, what they call a grandma's day, where the, the water is perfectly still, and oh. it's super beautiful. So it made me think that, like, I could actually probably do this for a living until the stern man said, wait till you're out here, and there's ice on the deck, right. and it's, you know, yeah. five below zero. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it, there's like a romanticism of it, right? You're sitting there, you're watching them take the traps out of the water, then they're, right. they're measuring the backs, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, come on, I need, I need more, more bait bags, you know? And then <laughs> you're rushing to get the bags and stuff them, kind of like in the kitchen, you know? So I think that was like the hardest part was trying to watch and observe everything, but you were still part of the crew at the same time. Right. Well, I think that, you know, it, I think the kitchen is uh, uh, glamorized as well, right? People are like, wow, it must be so great to be a chef. And we're like, I was scrubbing ovens until 3 a.m. last night, so <laughs> maybe, not as, the plumbing, right, not, right. maybe not as glamorous. Um, I mean, the hard part, yeah, I, mean, I thought I was doing a great job. I was like, I am <laughs> killing this lobstering. And they were like, okay, now we're gonna do it at the regular speed, because we actually have to pull 18 more traps. So <laughs> knowing that, you know, we weren't, I wasn't quite a up to speed or up to par, that was a little challenging. I've been, I haven't been the new guy in a while. <laughs> so, okay, how are the new people? All of us new people, how'd we do? Well, uh, I happened to take Jimmy with me, and uh, <laughs> you know, he did, he, he's, He's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good, good heart about it, good spirit, and he, uh, he gave it his all, and at least he knew enough to say when he wasn't sure exactly what he was doing right or wrong. But um, I'd take him again if he ever wanted to go. He was, uh, he was good to have on the boat. Thank you. There you go, Jimmy. Yeah, good job, Jimmy. <laughs> OK, so we've gotten over the hard part. What was the easy part? Like, what is, like, this is my dream. Uh, falling in love with the fact that you're out there on the water and you're pulling beautiful live Maine lobsters right out of the ocean. I mean, that was the easy part to fall in love with, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you think about it, when do you really, like, go hunting for live animals, you know? And you, you think about it as just like you're, you're fishing, but you're really pulling these animals out there, trying to attack you while you're, like, grabbing <laughs> them. Um, and then you're taking them and taking them back to the, you know, lobsterman's house. <laughs> <laughs> and preparing a dish for them. So, you know, that's like the best part is like being primal and in the moment. Um, and that's something that we don't really do on a day-to-day -day basis. Back to my bucket list of pulling a lobster out of the water oh and being God. able to go cook it and eat it. It's almost like, like something you'd read in a book or see in a movie. You know? It was idealic, really. Like literally, really. we were sitting in a gorgeous harbor watching the sunset behind us as we were eating, you know, beautiful Maine lobster that we hauled earlier in the day. So it was just, it was perfect. Yeah. So there are ways in which boats are kind of like kitchens, right? 100%. Like, absolutely. Like, how would you say, it? what's the comparison to you, for you? You know, I think that there, there's a lot of ways that I, I found it to be similar. I mean, I think one is watching them, you know, as you're learning, it all looks like a dance. It mm -hmm. looks like right. a ballet, right? Symphony. You're watching them. It's a symphony. Yeah. And I think when you watch the line in a kitchen, cooks that have worked together for a long time on a night where everything's like really working well, that's one of the most beautiful things in the world. And I think I got the, I really got the same feeling on the boat. Um, that for me was, was really cool to be a part of and see that, that similarity. Yeah. All right, let's see what really happened on the boat. <laughs> I want to see, was that a dance or was it like... Did that look like a ballerina? <laughs> or was it break dancing? <laughs> let's look. Got you some go. grunding so that you can stay dry as well and take those white pants back to Chicago. Oh yeah, it's like a glove. They're see? just my size. <laughs> What do you guys think? Looks good? Huh? I'm gonna like dig in deep. Roll my sleeves up. <laughs> you feel like you're getting the hang of it? No. I was told you gotta be smarter than the bait bag. No, it's like very similar to the kitchen. You gotta keep moving. Make sure you got all your mise en place, your things in place, yeah? You're all done? Well, I mean, I'm like, how do you do it? We've, I... all, we've only got 250 more to go. Is there any technique to the gaffing, or is it just uh, make sure you turn the hook the right way? Like down there. Oh, I missed him. Oh, that's one. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I'm not going. I'm not going at full speed. <laughs> All right. So this one's got quite a few. So I call these a hornet's nest. You reach in there, and every one of them wants to get a hold of you. So good luck. Not big enough. No? It's big enough. It's, oh, on, it the, big it's enough. on the main shell. Yeah, you're gonna be not making much money at this game. You throw them back. <laughs> This guy is waiting to get one of my fingers Sorry. right now. <laughs> you want to wrestle with that and bend it? Not really. <laughs> Do you think that I 
could I could lobster, I could be a lobster woman. I think you could manage. Do you think you would give me a job? I'm not ready to offer a full-time gig, okay. but. I feel like a real lobsterman, except not at all. how many lobsters we threw back. Partly I was like, wow, this is such hard work that you guys do, because you do all the work to pull it up, and then there's like three lobsters, and you have to toss so many back. But there's a reason. Like, it's a really important and great thing, because that's at the core of the sustainability of this entire industry. Yeah. I mean, in the seafood industry, sustainability is so important right now. Like, is that something that you guys are concerned about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it goes hand in hand with caring about food, right? You know where your food comes from and how it's procured. And, you know, these, these people right here, they pull the, these lobster out of the water one by one. I mean, you gotta Literally one by one. Seriously. And to the sustainability, you know, piece of it, when you see a trap come up and there's, you know, the thing's almost packed with lobsters and to see how many actually go back in the oh, water. It's that, heartbreaking. It was like literally, I thought we like hit it big and then Chris starts like, oh no, that doesn't work. That one's too big. That one's yeah. notched. And I'm watching, you know, what was 35 lobsters turn into three. You know, and that was pretty remarkable that that, that is how honest and how hard these people work at their sustainability and keeping their, you know, their fishery you know, maintained for the generations right. to come. Yeah. And if we yeah. don't, if we aren't practicing sustainability, right, there isn't going to be anything left. And I think that what we learned from the lobster men and women here is that they've actually been doing that for hundreds of years. It is Absolutely. one of the oldest industries, not just in mm -hmm. the Northeast, not just in Maine, but in the United States. And that for me was kind of mind blowing. And to see that they have always been practicing these things that now is a hot button topic when we're talking about. I was like, yeah, you, you guys had it right from the beginning. Yeah. You know? That's true, that, that trend thing. Hmm. Yeah. Right, maybe not right. so exactly. trendy in the lobster the, we What about were, you guys? We were conservationists before conservation right. was cool. Yeah. And so, you know, we've always taken pride on uh, be leaving something for the next generation. And the next generation, I say we, I mean generations ago. And one of the things we do is have a minimum size and oversize. So this is our tool right here. Most important tool on a lobster boat is to make sure that that lobster meets those guidelines to ensure that the young lobsters have a chance to breed before they're kept and the old lobsters that produce a lot of the brood stock are going to be able to remain on the sea floor to produce more lobsters for the next generation. Just to so tell you I know there's good. rules, right? So what are the rules? Because it's just that little measuring thing. So what we do besides measuring... <laughs> it has a name. Does not have a name? Is it what? It's Does that a, have a name? Measuring? It's called a gauge, right? It's a gauge. gauge. Measuring yeah, gauge. It's yeah, it's a measuring tool. Some call it a measure, some Extra call it credit. a gauge. Extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. And not only that, we uh, V-notch egg-bearing female lobsters, so they have the chance to continue reproducing, um, which is a huge sustainably, sustainably uh, measure. Um, not only that, but we have um, trap vents to let the smaller lobsters leave the trap. Um, so, I mean, like I said, we've been doing this for 150 years and we're so proud to be able to, you know, bring lobster to you and pass it on to younger generations to come. And just to show okay, you so how good we've been doing it, yeah. I started fishing 44 years ago, 20 million pounds was caught in the whole state of Maine. Now we're catching 120 to 130 million pounds. Wow. So what we've been doing, we've been doing right. 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 So instead of the, the lobster being decimated, it's right. allowed to, to flourish. So you guys got to use the gauge. Now I know the name of it. Um, <laughs> I was terrified of poking the eye out. Like, I'm going to throw no. blind lobsters back. But um, how'd you do? How'd you do with the gauge? Uh, I did pretty good. I was more afraid of them, like, cutting my finger off than yeah, You really felt like the they eye. were ready to attack you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. They, yeah, they definitely <laughs> so my first time, I thought if it went past the limit that he was, wasn't keepable. Right. And that's when Chris like, no, no, you throw him, if you're a lobsterman, you throw him in the water, you're not going to be making much money yeah. doing this. I was like, oh, well, thank you. So I, I think I, I, went, I was definitely the opposite of you. I was like, we can keep this, right? Like, no, we can keep this, right? No, I kept trying to, I, I, I'm a moneymaker, man. I wanted to <laughs> get, the, get those on the boat. But no, each time. So I was like, no, got to throw him back. It, it is that I'm like, I'm throwing money over right. Yeah. But you're keeping the future in front right. of you. So I think that's it. So one of the things that's very cool about our sustainable industry and what we do for these measures to maintain is um, what we'd said before is that we used to catch, you know, 20 or 30 million pounds. In the past, we've caught over 100 million. I think that's a direct result of our 
um, sustainable measures, and the more we give back, the more the ocean's providing for us. Yeah. So this thing has been, it used to be the new shell lobsters stayed in the state of Maine. We kind of kept them and hoarded them to ourselves. But now we're able to share them because we've been able to produce and catch so many more. So that's part of why we're here today. Okay, so now that you're, like, you're catching and sharing, and that makes me really hungry. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're here, we have plates in front of us, and I, what I'm really excited to do is to find out what these three amazing chefs did with the new shell lobster. So, Jimmy, I'm going to start with you. What is it that, like, you, you went, you had the boat, you tried something up there. What did you try to do? Right, so w w the first thing that I thought of is I've never had new shell lobster before. Like, like, you know, like Chris said, they've been kind of keeping it as a secret to themselves. <laughs> so for me, you know, you catch a lobster that just molted its shell and it's growing, it's super tender and sweet. And I wanted to kind of accent that by just quickly tempura frying it to get it nice and crispy. Um, to kind of, you know, just to kind of give you a little bit of contrast against the texture of the lobster. Um, we seasoned it with a little bit of uh, esplet chili pepper, some dried lime, and then a chai veoli. So I wanted to kind of hit on crispy, salty, spicy, acidic, and, and just basically a nice, beautiful piece of fried, delicate, uh, new shell Maine lobster. So there wasn't really much to it outside of that. Um, okay, bring it over here. Yeah, let me get this over here for you guys. That. Just go ahead and grab them with your fingers. That is, and, oh yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like, they sweet. look like That's lobster sweet. horn Thank dogs. You. They do, That's just what I was gonna say, you took my. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the goal is to make them like snacky and delicious, you know, not, nothing, it's pretty unadulterated, just delicious lobster, so. Beautiful. So, was being on the boat an influence in putting together this dish? I think so, absolutely. I mean, getting to be out there and see the water, see where this, the lobster's coming from, you know, that was, that was pretty much it for me. Never seeing new shell lobster before, trying it for the first time, and then starting to think, okay, how do I want this ingredient to be showcased? And that's how we, have, all of us chefs, pretty much approach you know, building new dishes, right? So when you find a new ingredient, it's almost like a new treasure. It's like something that you haven't experienced before. And then the gears start turning, and you just kind of start you know, plugging and piecing everything together. I thought what was interesting about the way that you approached it was um, it's not from any particular place. It's you borrowed a flavor from here and a flavor from Almost here. Almost like a flavor from thrift here. shopping of flavors yeah. in the world, right? <laughs> just kind of plugging and playing, uh. so. Okay, guys, what do you think? Comment. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. I think it's great. You know, I think you, you nailed what you were trying to achieve. It's super crispy. The uh, like floral, yeah, citrusy notes from the black lime really come through. Yeah, can it's we really tell these great. guys do something called Top Chef? <laughs> 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 I'm just waiting to get sent. We're not going to send you. Yeah, we're not oh going to tell God. you to pack your knives we and go, babe. Power. It's okay. Yeah. Yet. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, right. No, but it's great. And then the aioli is like it's it's really creamy and it, it coats your palate. It, it's great. I really like awesome. it. Awesome. I can't wait to come to your restaurant. Awesome, thank you. Karen? I think one of the two things that I love the most about it, right, it really reminds me of summer. My favorite um, lobster places in Maine have like maybe the best lobster and also the best onion rings or like some, in the summer we eat fried food, right? Like fried right. clams mm -hmm. or fried oysters and delicious things like that. And this brings it together in a really beautiful elevated way. And I love the flavors and it just like, for me it sings summer. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's an international, um, country fair dish, yeah. right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Elevated to the max. But um, Chris, so we're eating some fried lobster here, and I understand that you have an enormous skill at frying lobster. Well, what uh, did you think when you had this dish? Um, well, what did you think? You know, I, I grew up working a side job as a fry person, so I was able to give Jimmy a few pointers on how to run. <laughs> <laughs> um, did he need them? Did he yeah, really need yeah, them? we, you know, I, I was to lost. get him on the straight and narrow. <laughs> and, um, but the flavor that he was able to bring out of this new shell lobster was something I'd never experienced before. In the past, I've always eaten my lobster right out of the shell with either a little butter or eat it as I picked it. Um, but to get a chance to try these chef's flavorful items is, has been quite an experience for me. All right, I'm not, I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm still hungry. <laughs> Kwame, you're next. Uh, what so, did you make? Yeah, so I, I decided to go in like the Afro-Caribbean route. Um, so I did uh, new shell lobster with a gooseberry piri-piri, marinated cucumbers, uh, heirloom, you know, yellow tomatoes, and puffed quinoa. Um, so the cucumbers we treated like meat. And in Trinidad, we have this green seasoning. So it's culantro, celery, thyme, uh, scotch bonnet pepper, scallions, um, all types of stuff. We puree that, uh, and then we cryovac the cucumbers in that, so it goes into the center wow. of the cucumber. 
Um, All right, let's try that. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. This one, not as easy, yeah. just grabbing with got, your hands. Here we go. Yeah. But, so, here, um, your plate. Yeah, thank you. The ingredients thank obviously awesome. come from your past. Mm -hmm. Was there uh, something about when Maine gets crossed with Trinidad? Uh, <laughs> What happens? Like, do I think something amazing happens. You know, um, I was in this little island in in, in Maine, uh, making Nigerian and you know South African and Trinidadian cuisine. So I don't think it's ever happened up all the way up there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it was equally as delicious. You know, I'm um, taking an ingredient and just highlighting it. I'm not changing it much. I'm right. um, just pairing it with things that just accentuate the natural beauty of the dish itself. It's really, it's so beautiful, beautiful. to look at. Uh, Bruce, it's kind of spicy. What did you think about the, the Piri Piri? Was that just perfect for your palate? <laughs> Jimmy first started putting it, Jimmy. Kwame started putting it together. He come up with a Piri Piri sauce and he said, yeah, try this. So I put my finger in it. Whoa, can you, can you tone that down for me a little bit? But, I mean, uh, everything works so well together with such a nice, fresh, summer salad, great way to use lobster, and, and it just shows that you can use it in so many different ways, like his Nigerian rice dish that he does, that he used to use uh, goat. lamb, goat with, mm -hmm. actually. Mm. And now he uses lobster, and it, that's my second best way to have lobster. <laughs> <laughs> really so I know great. you guys are um, best friends, so <laughs> kind I, of, I, yeah. think that, I think that <laughs> you might, um, I'm just gonna guess you liked his dish, but what'd you think? So, I, I, you know that I love your food, and I love your cooking. <laughs> no, I do. It's, it's one of, I, I would rather eat your food than almost anything else, um, and I love this dish. The thing that I love the most about it um, is actually the gooseberries. Mm -hmm. So I love gooseberries, I love how tart they are, and I think they bring, I mean, I know you always bring your own flair to a dish, um, but that is like the thing that's like that's really thing. special to awesome. me, and I, I love in this dish. I, Your turn. I couldn't agree more. I think that the, the point of how beautiful and fresh and crunchy, mm. and you get this nice, sweet, you know, new shell main lobster in there, it's just really unexpected, and the gooseberries just kind of pop. And the spice is like perfect against the richness and the sweetness of the lobster, so it's almost like one of those like quintessential perfect summer salads of lobster, but just with unexpected flavors and twists that you wouldn't normally get. And I love, spi I love yeah. spicy, so for me it's... It works. Yeah, perfect. it's perfect. Yeah. I love it. All right, Karen, what did you do? You, what, what was your dish? <laughs> so I made um, a lobster and exo dumplings, a little bit of toasted chili vinaigrette. Um, I was blown away by the, the new shell lobster and how sweet and tender it was. And I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to highlight that Although it's delicate and it's sweet, it's also rich. Lobster can take some big flavors. Um, and it's also regarded, so many people regard it as a luxe, right? A luxe mm -hmm, ingredient. Right. And I wanted to pair it with something that was equally as luxe. So for me, that's XO. Um, so a beautiful condiment that's kind of like a jam, um, ginger, scallion, uh, shallots, and dried chili that are kind of cooked down with some dried shrimp and dried scallops, mm. which are not only very rare, but expensive and, you know, and beautiful yes. with, with a pork product. That so sounds amazing. <laughs> can, we, can you pass the plate? I don't know. We're going to keep it over here for a little. So you can, use, you can use bacon. You can use ham. I like to use a little bit of Chinese sausage. Thank you. Um, you know, and mixing that with the claw meat of the, of the new shell lobster. And to me, that's like a really cool way to take two ingredients that are luxe and kind of elevate each, um, you know, each ingredient. And I wanted to, I was, you know, I kind of wanted to say thank you to Cyrus for taking me out on his boat and I wanted to kind of show him something different that you could do with lobster. So, I hope, I hope everyone likes it. <clears throat> so, I've got to say, <clears throat> spicy. Spicy. Mm -hmm. So Kwame's dish didn't um, did knock me over the way that it did Bruce, but this is delicious oh, and good. very spicy. It's, it's got some yeah. kick. It's got it some kick. I know. It's just like you. It's got, it's got the lobs, the lobster lobster spice. Up. The lobster stands up to it, though. That's the thing. You get the spice and the sweetness really kind of plays there. <laughs> I can't speak. Dana, are you okay? Are you, are you all right? Uh, I think it's great. You know, I love... The only thing I love more than Karen is her food. Mm. All right, so this is really great. <laughs> really great. You're welcome. Well. Okay, you need to describe it. Why? 
Why? Uh, so <laughs> sorry. The, uh, I mean, the spiciness <laughs> and the unctuousness of the XO works really well with the, with the lobster, and uh, it's not really a pairing that you see with lobster uh, in general. Um, so to see this in, in this style is, is really beautiful. It's super smart though too. I mean, the XO has dried shrimp and dried scallop, and mm -hmm. it's very right. shellfish based. So you get tons of umami and spice, and then that kind of cuts off the richness with the lobster and plays so beautifully. So super. I wish the Chinese restaurant by my house served dumplings. How come? Jimmy, I'll come to your house. I'll make you dumplings please. next day. Yeah. I'm going to bring you to invite yeah, me over. the New China Buffet in Downers Grove. Yeah, New yeah. So. I'll have your kids all lined up making dumplings. I'll teach them all. Don't worry about it. But awesome. how did you do in teaching Cyrus to do dumplings? Cyrus, how hard what did you think? That? Cyrus, well, what did you think? I mean, Karen brought her A game on the boat, so I felt like I had to give it my all to make these dumplings, but it's not as easy as it, she made it look. <laughs> but I felt like I made at least like 12 edible dumplings, which I was pretty Eight. proud. Eight. <laughs> what? No, I'm just kidding. Maybe you did a really four. good job. <laughs> No, Cyrus was awesome. It was actually as much fun as it was being on the boat. It was really fun to be in the kitchen together and working together. And he, he, don't let him fool you, he can cook. He definitely brought his A game. He was like, I was like, oh, do you need a knife? Here's my knife. And he was like, I brought my own knife. It's cool. <laughs> he was like ready to go. And he was definitely ready to show me that he had kitchen skills. And, you know, so it wasn't only fun, but you were, you were awesome to work well, with. Well, if you're in a kitchen like with somebody like, Cared. You just you have to <laughs> we, had a, we had a really good time. I'm trying to get a job on his boat, yeah. so like anyone wants to say Sucking nice things about him. me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so when you guys you know think about the the time on the boat, the time cooking with the lobster, how did it change the way you think about lobster and Maine and New Shell and what you knew in the past and what you know now? I feel like it really completed the whole circle. A lot of the times wherever you're at, if you if you're not living in Maine. You know, I live in Chicago, so basically we're smack in the center of the country. You call your seafood purveyors, and all of a sudden there's lobsters at your door. But to come and get on Chris's boat and literally go out, you know, up with the sun and just go out there and haul traps, it really kind of put everything into perspective. And you kind of see the entire chain. I think it makes you appreciate how hard these people work. You know, and that, that really is kind of what it is for Absolutely. me. It was, it was a whole new appreciation for, for the industry and the fishery and how these, how these people work. Yeah, Jimmy, I mean... When I got back to my kitchen after like literally taking yeah. one lobster out of the ocean at a time, if my cooks overcooked the lobster, I was like, you, oh, you really don't understand right. what's going on here and you need to really respect the animal. And I walked them through that process and it's funny because they get it. That's you awesome. Know? Right. That's like when you, um, I've heard a lot of chefs say, you know, they take their team to a farm and right. all of a sudden there's less waste. So, but Karen, you're opening a new restaurant. I am. I am opening November. a new restaurant. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you're you. Well, fan. There, I know I'm your biggest fan too. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I gotta ask you. Like, the question of the night would be: Like, is there a place for lobster on that menu? There's absolutely. So, there's always a place for lobster on my menu. Definitely, new shell lobster um, will be on the menu. And you know what? I found. I asked a lot about how I can make sure that one, I'm getting Maine lobster, mm -hmm. two, that when it's in season, right. I'm getting new shells. And I actually called my seafood purveyors when I, when I got back. And I was like, how can I make sure, I wanna make sure that I'm getting lobster from Maine and can I get new shells yet? And they were like, well, they're not coming in yet, but specify on your order because I wanted to make sure that that was the, yeah. the product that I was getting. Um, I have family that lives in Maine, so I am very, very lucky that I get to spend time in Midcoast Maine on, on the coast and um, to be able to have that experience and absorb it even more just solidifies to me um, you know, how much I love the ingredient, how much I love lobster, and how much I really, truly respect the industry and was kind of blown away by it. And Karen awesome. knew that if she wanted to get me down to her restaurant, she had to have Maine lobster. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like, yeah, but, but I really want to know. Right. I was like, are you coming to the restaurant? And he was like, is there lobster on the menu? And I said, okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> but what we really want to know is not whether he's going to come to the restaurant, because that seems like, you know, good cooked food. But are you ever going to have us back <laughs> on oh, Absolutely. Boat? I think everybody's invited back. Yeah. You, need to bring, you need to bring your boots next time. <laughs> you did an incredible job. Oh, hold on, hold on. You asked all of us how we did on the boat. Yeah, how Dana, did, how did, Dana, how did Dana, Dana do on the boat? That's what we want to know. She did amazing. She caught on just like that. I was so impressed. How much so. are you paying her? <laughs> no, she's her a boss, man. That, that was nice finesse setting that trap. Yeah, it's very fluid. <laughs> Okay, so it wasn't Anytime. just us on the boats having fun with each other. We also had a crew. I was really worried for the crew because I thought the guy at the front of the boat, what's the front called? 
bow. 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 The bow. <laughs> You're just gonna fall off the bow with the camera. And, uh, but we have some video. So we're gonna launch the Trap to Table Maine Lobster Series tomorrow, which is amazing, so that we can see all the adventures that we all had. And it debuts on lobsterfrommaine.com tomorrow. Beautiful. Yeah. So let's have a look, because you guys get to see it first. Finally. <laughs> something that's like been on my bucket list to actually go out and catch some lobster right out of the ocean. You want to wrestle with that and bend it? Not really. Now remember, keep your top hand out of the way. You got to work as you go, just like in the kitchen. as perfect as perfect gets to be cooking Maine lobster. This is like the mother sauce of Nigeria, so I'm excited to use Maine lobster with it. This for me, the Maine lobster really is the star of the show. This is amazing! for the generosity of having us on your boats and slowing you down for a day. <laughs> Thank you to the first chefs for having such great inspiration from the days on board and feeding us. Thanks to the crew and thanks to, to the history of Maine and the lobster industry that we get to enjoy these new shells. And, and thank all of you so much for watching and check out the trailer and good night! Woo!